welcome back. So this is the second of the four sessions. So I trust you've already uh, watched uh, Understand the Construction Demolition Waste Problems, so get a feel for the problems. Now we're just going to review a series of construction demolition waste materials. So this is from the first, uh, first couple of projects where a series of CMD waste materials were reviewed and analysed. So I've basically got a slide on each of the five materials, both for specific outcomes for that material, but also some general thoughts on how we can um, improve use of the materials for recycling. So the first of the five materials is brick and how that can bring about circular economy opportunities. So ideas such as storing them in a stable flat area to avoid breakages from fallovers. Secondly, determining a means for cutting bricks into half more accurately so that both halves can be used and avoid breakages. So these are both simple, practical ways of improving uh, waste for uh, construction demolitions. Thirdly, more of a kind of economic approach, developing an agreement where a contractor sells back the recycled waste from the original material supplier. And it's really important with circular economy opportunities and waste that there are economic benefits for industry to take up some of these sustainability options. And finally, take back brick leftovers to use as, as aggregate or landscaping cover. So to be able to reuse some of these materials for a different application. And so coming on to a second material type, concrete, and this and circular economy opportunities with that material. So this kind of has a bit of a recognize, improve, utilize framework. So in terms of recognizing, um, as a starting point that recognizing that recycled concrete aggregates, RCA, when produced to conform to the standard specification criteria, it is a technically viable alternative. So it's really important that any of these uh, recycled alternatives are technically viable, that it makes financial sense, but also technically that material is, is strong enough um, and has the benefits of uh, the non-recyclable one. Uh, second one, it again is a more practical one, improve on-site separation to sort concrete waste materials from other construction demolition waste. And thirdly, uh, to utilise, utilise advanced density separation techniques to grade crushed concrete finer, to increase the homogeneity, uh, the, the, the sameness um, of that material, and reduce the presence of foreign or outside inclusions. In terms of the third material reviewed, timber, um, one um, aspect would be to improve existing and, and employ new varieties of machinery instead of using old and obsolete tools to help reduce timber waste. So it reduces the waste. I appreciate there is that um, extra cost of buying the new uh, material, but uh, uh, new, sorry, m machinery, but I trust return on investment would, 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 would help in the longer term. Secondly, use non-disposable or metal framework, uh, a formwork I should say, instead of uh, timber formwork in the construction projects. So th again, that it's not something you would dispose of. And then thirdly, cast, consider precast timber frame in that design stage, in that early stage, so that less waste um, happens later on. The first material type revealed is steel. So, um, and three um, opportunities presented here. Firstly, adjust the specifications in favour of steel waste-based materials in new uh, construction projects. So make that, that specifications favourable. Secondly, stabilise market volatility to ensure sustainable usage of steel waste and steel manufacturing. So it, it, it comes a bit more into that kind of economic business financial side of, of measures. And thirdly, again, an economic measure, provide a landfill levy exemptions for residual waste derived from steel recycling. So if, that, if the finances and that can, one economic measure is through a levy can be adjusted to make it advantageous then uh, to recycle, then that can really um, provide benefits for the industry as a whole. So fifth, glass. Um, naturally, uh, glass is a hard substance that may be transparent, translucent and brittle in nature, like through the picture, um, often or primarily used for windows, but can actually be used in other ways. Um, so thinking of it used as an insulation material, structural component, 
an external glazing and cladding material. So it's kind of thinking through different materials that are used and which of the more sustainable ones can be used alternatively. So thirdly, in infrastructure projects, um, application glass includes, but not limited to, um, sound barriers and tunnels and as ingredients for road surfaces such as asphalt and insulators. So it can be used for other, other things for a more sustainable outcome. So in terms of finishing this second uh, training session and presentation, have a pause, have a reflect, and think which C&D waste materials have the most potential for creating a circular economy in your organization. So uh, whether it's one of the five presented, whether it's another one, uh, I've given various options in terms of practical measures, in terms of business financial measures, um, and other thoughts as well about uh, recycling the material, reusing the material. So it's a good chance while I kind of finish this session to uh, get you to think more deeply about that. Thank you very much, and I hope you can tune in to the third one uh, upcoming.